Hello everybody. Welcome to Carrie the Mortician channel. Uh, good to see everybody. Today is Friday um, and I'm puttering through Friday looking for all the ambition for all the things I need to do right now. Uh, I'm Carrie the Mortician. This is where I go live and you can ask me whatever you want to ask me about the funeral business or cemeteries, crematories, anything to deal with funerals and death care. Um, some of the more commonly requested or questioned questions, more asked questions, I guess is how I should phrase it, are listed in the description of this video. So if I am ignoring your question or I don't see your question, but check those because there's some questions that I'm not going to answer in the, in the video if they are too often asked. So good morning everybody. Um, and I took, I had posted on Instagram this morning because I went to the coffee place to grab a coffee, which I usually don't do. I just have coffee from home or at work, whatever. And they like upgraded me to the biggest size and they did an extra shot of espresso. And this is still how much coffee I have like a couple hours later left of it. And I did pour it over. It was cold. So I poured it over ice and made myself a nice coffee with it. Yay. Ooh, somebody's in Italy. I want to be in Italy drinking wine. That would be fun. Do they have Josh wine in Italy? Oh, I don't really usually drink espresso, espresso, but they threw in that free shot. It's free shot Friday at this coffee place. So, um, I don't know if I've ever had a straight regular espresso. It just seems like so small, like it doesn't take long to drink. <laughs> I just don't know. Um, so want to answer this, that main question. So Mac had asked, what would three reasons be that someone might switch funeral home? So the person has been brought into the care of the funeral home because that's who the family told whoever to call. And why might the family switch to a different funeral home? So number one is going to be cost that you realize whatever the type of services you are might be less expensive elsewhere. And so you need to really look at cost and find some place that meets your needs more. That's a big one, especially with a simple cremation or a direct cremation. That can vary so differently between locations of funeral homes because you might have a direct cremation focused funeral home. And so they have way lower overheads. They're working on volume. Uh, and so people want sometimes that others want the full funeral home service type thing. So it just depends. But cost is going to be a number one reason when you do transfer, you're going to owe that first funeral home for the removal. So typically you'll have to pay that first funeral home for what you've contracted with them before you go to the other funeral home. So be aware of that. Number two reason I would think is you're having a bad experience. Either you're not connecting with the funeral director and they're the only option or something bad has maybe happened. Um, so maybe that's number two and number three. You're not connecting with the funeral home or something has happened that is bad. Those might be two others. I would say, you know, personality wise, either you just don't get along, you don't connect, you don't click, you're not feeling comfortable there. That's a big one. If you're not feeling comfortable when you actually go into the funeral home and you picked it just out of the, the yellow pages, does anybody do that anymore? <laughs> um, or off of Google or whatever. And you walk in and you're like, oh my gosh, that might be a reason to call as well and switch to a different funeral home. Maybe it's dirty. Maybe, you know, you're feeling some heebie-jeebie, whatever, walking in. I would say those are different reasons that you might switch. Um, hello in Charlotte, Michigan, or Charlotte, Michigan. You're not too far away, Angie. Oh, good morning, everybody. Hello in Holland, Michigan. I love it. You guys are so close. Like, it's crazy to me that so many of you, not, like, within an hour of me, get on. Like, it's so, oh my gosh, that's awesome. With a direct cremation, can you still hold a brief viewing for family members? Some funeral homes require an ID viewing even where two or three family members have to come in and see the person to identify them. But yes, you can do an unembalmed private viewing. Depends on the funeral home, depends on the restrictions, depends on their rules that they have. But yes, you can. 
Once your body is donated as an organ donor, how long can it be before your family can see you? Typically, I might add one extra day into the process, but they need to do that procurement super fast. Um, and so you're going to go immediately as fast as they can get a hold of the family, get authorization, go have the procurement, and then get back to the funeral home. So it may add about a day into the process. I had a bad experience with the funeral director, Katie says. Do share. Share your story. And all the sunshine. Hello, sunshine. Used to live on Powder Horn, Kalamazoo behind. Wow, in Kazoo. Um, were there some other questions? Somebody, I'm in mortuary school. Is it normal for a body to stay casketed in a funeral home for three weeks and start to smell? No, typically they're not going to put them in the casket unless it's a, they had the funeral and they have to wait for burial or something like that. And they are stored in the casket. But typically you're not casketing someone that early because there could be too many problems in that interim. You're going to typically leave them non-dressed with uh, lotion on their face, things like that. And then right before the services, get them ready. So no, it's not typical to keep them in the casket three weeks before their services. Too many problems. Junior Woodrum, you're welcome. I try to answer all my, um, all of my emails. I have about 20 right now I need to go answer. Any suggestions on how to make chemistry easier for me? I hate chemistry. <laughs> so um, it's one of those learn the basics so that you can just get through the class. Like I hate to say it that way, but I'm not in the prep room writing out chemical equations to figure something out. Like it's not an applied thing that I use at all in my daily funeral director existence. So learn the basics to get through it. Um, study with different people. Hear the information from different people. Sometimes you may just not connect to how the teacher's explaining it, but somebody else might be able to explain things to you in a new, fresh way, and all of a sudden it clicks. So that's what I would recommend is, you know, if, if there's somebody else in your class, just say, hey, can we get together and talk about this for like an hour after class or for a little while? Can you explain this to me maybe in, in a way I can understand it and just see what happens. Um, Katie, just an uncaring lady who rushed to remove my dad from my home when he died. Didn't say she was sorry. Didn't offer any support. Just plain rude. Yeah, some people are super short and super um, just a little more clinical in how they work. Um, and it does come off rude. I agree. If this, tell me if my, I have my little heater on my toes. My toes are cold. So if that's too loud, let me know, please. She's going to Fort Sam and had issues with her interment. So she stayed in one of the parlors overnight. When I came in, she smelled awful. Yeah, um, that makes sense. It's a lot of times you do have to store for burial in a national cemetery. I work in a hotel now, but I'm interested in working in a funeral home nearby where I live. But that place just gave me a weird feeling. Should I try and take the assistant position? I'm unsure. You know, it, you, the best thing you could, or the worst thing is you take it and work a week and realize, yeah, you don't want to be there. And at least you tried. Want to start funeral home here in East Africa. What can you advise? You know, I don't know the market there. I don't know what you typically do for funerals there. So I would say travel to a funeral home or go visit a funeral home that is successful and see what they have done and talk to them about how they started in that area. That's really going to be the best thing. Thanks, Christina. Um, okay, Sean sent some question. When the retort is fired up, does it release black smoke from the chimney? No. <laughs> Short answer, no. Um it's not like on movies where when you turn the retort on, you have black billowing smoke. That's a very bad thing if that is happening. And that's why we, there's cameras on the outside of the building at all times. So you can watch for anything like that happening. But there is a two burn chamber on a retort 
which is where the person is cremated inside of. And there's a two burn chamber so that if anything gets past the first chamber, it is incinerated completely in the second chamber. So you don't have anything that could create the black smoke by that point because you're completely just incinerating as you go. Urns for cremains, say from early 20th century, were larger, or what I saw being placed in niches. Was it because there was no cremulator to break down the fragments of the cremains? I don't, I would have to see. Um, <laughs> they might have, yes, processed them differently or just made them larger. Um, just like now we're very space conscious. We are 100 years ago, not as much. Um, maybe graves weren't as tight in as they are now, larger, you, you know, spaces for cremated remains. So it could be a combination of both of those. Have you had any thoughts about the phenomena of human spontaneous combustion would make a great two minute video? I don't know. I don't know if I really have thoughts on human spontaneous combustion. I've never really thought of it. Will there be another that's naughty video? Here's a man named James Hines, whose legs were cut off to make him fit in his casket by Cave Funeral Home in South Carolina. Yeah, you guys have sent me a lot of really good, more uh, naughty video topics. So I'm, I'm sure I will do another That's Naughty video. If you haven't watched one of those, it's about naughty funeral directors. And everybody says naughty doesn't seem like a big enough word, but it's catchy. It's more catchy than scandalous funeral directors. I don't know. Naughty is fun. And it came from a video I did. Do they burn the casket also, or are you left with an empty casket after? Yes, the casket is burned with the person, but it is completely burned off. So the cremated remains received back do not contain any of the casket or box in them. Is there a formalin for blacks and white dead persons based on their skin color? No, there's really not. There's different um, formaldehyde solutions that are more pink or more orange based. Men are more orangey, um, like a tan. Women are more pink based underneath. Um, same with any color skin tone. You're going to have different bases to that skin tone. And so you can choose chemicals accordingly. Is it normal to have a little fear working in the funeral home for the first time? Of course. No one loves walking into the funeral home for the first time for anything, let alone working there and what you might be encountering and left alone with. Um, so, yes, fear is completely normal. Even the metal handles. Yes, the metal handles are taken out. Anything metal is removed from those cremated remains at the end. So there's a big pile of all these chunk, big chunks of bones, metal, little things in there. That's all raked out of the unit, taken. The metal is all processed out. Then those cremated remains are processed in the cremulator and broken down into much smaller granular cremated remains to return to the family. Um, actually, speaking of cremation stuff, um, I just lined up next Tuesday. I'll be doing a live just like this, but from a crematory with a cremation, uh, cremate, why can't you talk? A crematory operator. So um, just line that up. So his name is Josh. I feel like that Josh is just a big name in my world because the guy that did the glass orbs name was Josh. I love my Josh wine, all the Josh. So um, we're doing a live next Tuesday around four o'clock Eastern Standard Time here on the channel. I'll put a thing in as a premiere so that you guys know it's there. Um, and when we go on live, you can ask him all the crematory operator questions you would like to ask. He, of course, will have to answer some with discretion, but we'll hopefully answer a lot more questions for you guys. Um, so I got this list of questions. Look at this. Questions. Questions that a viewer sent me. So slow but sure. And these are more like to get to know me. Um and some stuff about the funeral business, but they're kind of fun. So how do they tell the difference between casket ashes and people ashes? There's not ash. This is cremated remains. So there's not ash in there. It is 
literally chunks of bone left over. Those bones are taken and broken down into the cremated remains. So everything is burned off except for the basic structure of that human. Drew, dang it all. You'll have to catch it after. It'll be a good one. Um, it's hard to try and get two people to do the lives with them for you guys because YouTube, you can't do like a Zoom type sit setup live. Like I can't have two people on doing a live video. Why can't we do that, YouTube? Because that would be awesome. Emily is asking, do you have an opinion on mortuary management classes in mortuary school, like accounting? These are good to have basic knowledge. Even if you don't plan on owning or doing the financials at a business, you need to have basic knowledge about all these things you're taking classes in. Yep, you're not going to have interest in all the areas, but you need these basics within you. Even if it's just because you're going to sit down and meet with a family of an accountant or talk to an accountant, and you can carry on then a 10-minute conversation with somebody about accounting, which is their hobby or their interest or their career, and it makes you super personable by having that knowledge base. So thinking about it from that angle as well. Jennifer, that's super fascinating. So it looks like they found a casket, um, a casketed person. I'm guessing, wait, I don't understand. So I saw last night that a homemade casket was found with a body in it in a cemetery here in Oregon a couple weeks ago. They're investigating. So what is so scandalous about that? People make caskets all the time. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. I'll have to find that story. Uh, is volunteering in a funeral home a thing? Why do you want to volunteer? That's called working for free. I'm not a supporter of working for free. Work should be compensated. So don't work for free. Have you ever had a family change their mind on embalming once it was started? Yes, I have had families that because of costs, they change from a burial to a cremation, but they've already authorized the embalming and they pay for the embalming. So if you ask us to do a service that requires high standard of professional care, you're going to pay for it, even if you backpedal to something else. Uh, had it actually recently, had it happen actually recently. Oh, Jennifer, okay. It was found above ground in the cemetery. So somebody put a body in a casket, took it to the cemetery, and just left it. That's super, I would like to say fun, but I don't want that being taken the wrong way. That's super interesting. So I would, I just, I'm going to go recount. I would totally volunteer to try and find out who that person is. I'm going back on what I just said, because that would be fun. Okay, I'm going to do a couple questions from this. Um, what is a place you never want to visit or never go again? Uh, I never want to go to Mexico again. <laughs> I got so sick when I went there on a vacation and was so scared because I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital while I was there. And I just was not comfortable and did not want to do any of that. So I would like to say I don't want to ever go there again. Whether I will or not, I don't know. But right now, I, I choose other places. Favorite genre of music, favorite band and singer? Well, I was just looking at concerts because I've hardly ever gone to concerts in my life. And I want to go to more concerts because that's super fun, right? So um, Train is a big one. I love their music. I would love to go see them. Ed Sheeran is like my number one concert I want to go to. I love his music. It depends on my mood, what I listen to. I listen to kind of all sorts of things. Some days it's show tunes, like the Wicked soundtrack. Some days um, more, a little more rock. Some days a little more old school, like 90s hip hop. Some days it's country. Um, some days it's mushy love songs. Yeah, it just depends. Mike, um, check out my videos on paranormal activity. Uh, you can be a shadow, Rebecca, just 
call other ones. Carrie said that last time. Yeah, you can go shadow at a funeral home if you'd like to. You just got to find one who's going to, you know, respond and kind of follow through. How often are funeral homes abandoned and everything is just left as it is? So there's no like overseeing. If you close your funeral home, you can literally just walk away from all of it. You don't have to do anything with any of it. There's no rules that you have to dispose of records. There's nothing to ensure um, anything about the funeral home. You can just literally walk away. So it doesn't happen often, often, but it doesn't happen when there's no successor. You're not, nobody's buying the property. Trying to dispose of everything inside a funeral home is huge. One thing that I think a lot of people don't recognize is the amount of stuff you have to have in order to run a funeral home. You do have to have a lot of stock in inventory. You have to have urns, some caskets. You have to have cots of different sizes, shapes. You have to have the whole prep room stocked with the table, machine, fluids, plastics, all sorts of things. You have to have all the chairs in the chapel, the beer, the church truck, the podium, all the Catholic equipment to set out. You have to have everything in your office, all of the records, all of the printing, like the paper stock and materials. It's a lot. You have to have specific vehicles for a funeral home. So that's why there's huge overhead in a funeral home. So to run a funeral home business thoroughly is very expensive to do because of all those things you have to have for all the different options. And so when people say, why is it so expensive? It's expensive to run a funeral home. We're not like raking in dough because we have no expenses. We have to pay for all that crap <laughs> within the funeral home to be there for your usage when you want to plan a funeral. So it is a lot to think of when you're like stepping back and thinking of all that. It's a lot. Huge printers to print all those super fancy folders and things and prayer cards. And yeah, it takes a lot. Well, you can just leave the bodies. Um, I mean, it's not good. You can get a big lawsuit for that. But the unclaimed cremated remains get left um, a lot when it comes to that. Because otherwise, what you're going to do? Take them with you? No. So they just leave them. Hey, Sandy, catching live. Do you ever walk into the embalming room and see dead bodies setting up? No, they do not set up. It's 120% physically impossible. Physically impossible. Have you planned the next true crime video with undertaking voice? Not yet. Um, I need to get two of them lined up. We try and shoot two at a time. Like we just shot two of the embalmers with a beer videos. One of them posted, I think yesterday, the WTF one which was fun. Um, John really wanted to celebrate National Beer and National Burrito Day. So we had to do it. Just had to do it. Uh, so there'll be a second one of those posting in a couple weeks. And we need to do, I need to come up with two more crimes. So I don't just cover any crime. The way I pick them is I try and get different methods of death, which would mean different trauma to the deceased. Because we're not doing the video specifically on that crime. We're doing it on that scenario of caring for a body in that specific way. So we've done hanging, we've done burned bodies, we've done all you know all sorts of different things, um, falls. So it's coming up with um, some more methods of death that would cause different trauma that we would like to discuss. So I've got a couple of ideas. And people request them all the time, all sorts of different ones, because people want us just to discuss the crime. But if I've already discussed a body with that same trauma, it's it's going to be the same exact video, essentially, except for that little bit of describing the crime at the beginning. Does that make sense? So it's finding those different things. Yeah, John is cute as a button. Like, he's adorable, right? With his bib overalls. So I'm trying to plan a trip down to do, like, day in the life of John. Because the man eats so good, not like healthy good, but like he finds the best food all over the place. Um, if you want, go follow him 
John T. Hill on Facebook. I posted his information at the end of this last video because I was like, you've got fans, John. People want to follow you. He's so fascinating. I would love to do a series of videos just on John on my channel because he really is um, amazing. Angela, I've been keeping track of the Lori Daybell case. The remains of the kids had been kept in a freezer for three years. Why would they not release them to their families? Um, so bodies may be detained by the medical examiner if they are trying to figure out who killed them. Because if the parents are in question, they and if they haven't been arrested, then technically they have not lost their right to choose disposition for the kids. But if they are the ones who caused the death, then they don't get to say, they lose the right to say what happens to the kids. So it might be a scenario where they're trying to see who legally should get the right for disposition for those kids. That's what my guess would be, but I don't know hundred um, percent because I don't know that uh, story. I'll have to look it up. So what happens when you embalm a body who had an ostomy? Would the fluids come out? No, you just suture it closed. So you would typically use what's called a purse string suture. When you've got a circle hole rather than a slit, like a slit, you're going to just sew back and forth on each side. Whereas a circle, you can't just sew back and forth. So you're going to sew around the hole. So let's say the hole like this. Somebody's going to turn this into something naughty, I'm sure. But so you go around the edge, you go up and then down and in, and then up and down and in all the way around the hole. Sometimes I'll go twice around and then you've got two strings and you're going to end so that they're like next to each other and you pull them and that hole is going to go zoop, and it's going to suture up nice and tight. So you're not going to have any leaking from it. So her string suture is what that's called. <clears throat> yeah, Nicole, I need to do stitches. Um, somebody just requested that recently. I've tried to, I've thought about doing it with like chicken breasts, <laughs> um, trying to be able to show. I know that there are things you can get to practice different sutures. I've tried to figure out a different way to do it, though. Um, a lot of requested videos, I want to do them well. I'm not going to just do them to do them. And I have a lot of requested videos. So it would be nice if I could. And, and a lot of times, all of a sudden, I'll be like, hey, that's how we're going to do it. Like the dressing video took two years probably of trying to figure out how I'm going to dress somebody without a body. And without having to use myself, which we can use me, but then I need to get another funeral director plus myself, plus everything. Yeah. At what age did you decide to become a mortician? Um, I would say I probably made the decision when I was about 19 or so. I would say, yeah, you have revived my spirit plan to start a funeral home. Good luck to you. Uh, that's wonderful. Should COVID bodies be incinerated? No. Not even a little bit? No. 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 Do you collect anything or have something you are obsessed with? Um, coffee, mug, coffee mugs. I have to hold myself back because I want to buy coffee mugs everywhere I go. Um, that's about it. I don't know that I collect anything else. Really? What else do I collect, guys? I feel like some of you know me better, <laughs> better than sometimes my recollection is. Um, so is that a company, Ken? You say Dav Davis and Geck and Ethicon will give you suture devices to practice twice on. Where do I get that? <laughs> oh, magazine covers. I do have my um, Life magazine. Are they Life magazine? Hold on. Let me get one. I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Woohoo! Where are they? 
Because if you know me, you know, but where are they? We don't want to play the screen. Where do I have those, guys? I think they're back in my storage room. They're not in here in my office. I don't know why I haven't hung them up yet. So I collected um, all the Time Life magazines that had a funeral on the cover, a funeral scene. Uh, I think there's what, six of them or seven maybe now um, and frames them all. So yes, I have collected those. Major suture provider. Yes, you can get COVID from a dead body. They are contagious. It's been found up to 90 days past death. They do not make time life anymore. They're the last place I left in. Drew. Drew. Um, let's see. Do you have any pets? No. I am since my dog Ralph died a couple years ago, haven't gotten another. If you ask my girls, it's gonna happen any day. Any day there's going to be a new dog, a new puppy. I've thought about getting a dog to become a therapy dog and take to work with me. Um, because then it makes more sense. Like when you're a single mom and you are at work and you don't sometimes come home right after work, but there's a dog there, that's hard. You know, like you can't just call your other person and be like, hey, will you go home and let the dog out? Like it's just you. As many of you know, like it's no new information. It's just a new way of living for me now. And so thinking, okay, crap, I, if this dog is at home, I have to come home. But if I take the dog with me, by golly, it solves a lot of problems. So, yay. Um, did you play sports in school? These are fun questions. They're a little get to know you carry questions. Um, yes, I ran track. I threw the shot put and I did some running. I threw the disc. Um, I tried basketball and volleyball and I'm not good and coordinated <laughs> enough to make the team. I do have a letter, varsity letter in wrestling because I was the wrestler at helper girl for the team. Um, and that's the extent of my sports. Yeah. I like to run now once in a while. I do work out every day. I like to lift weights. Um, I'd like to play darts. <laughs> I like shuffleboard, the tabletop. Um, not really the best at, you know, playing sports. I'll try and I'll talk a good game, but yeah, not the most naturally athletic human <laughs> there is. My P.O. Box is P.O. Box 64 in Plainwell, Michigan, which is M.I. 49080. What's my favorite food? It depends on the day. I like anything with Franks on it. So like buffalo wings, um, eggs, anything. I put Franks on anything. So probably Franks is one of my favorite foods. I've been digging onion rings lately. Like if I go out to eat or I'm having a drink or something, I may order extra crispy onion rings. Not sure why. I've just been craving them the last couple weeks. No idea. No idea. Is a balming body is enjoyable. It is gratifying. It is gratifying to restore a person, to bring them a little back from emaciation or edema or trauma that was maybe at the end. So, um, I ran the mile for the most part, uh, ran a couple four by, what is it? Four by four hundreds. Not my sport. My legs were not made to run that fast. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, do you like camping and creepy stories? That's super fun. I don't know when I've gone camping for the last time. I think in my life I've only truly gone camping, like legit in a tent camping one time. And that was when I was a senior in high school. So 1996, summer of 96, uh, was the last time I camped. Legit camp. I would love to come back to Europe. I would love to come to Ireland was kind of my first and I would like to come to Italy. Those are my two big, except Iceland is, or yeah, Iceland is probably my top. So Ireland, Iceland, Italy. Why do they all start with eyes that I want to go to? Those are my top three that I want to kind of travel to. 
How hot do I like wings? Um, not too hot. If there's no flavor and it's just heat, I don't want it. I like flavor. Have you had the chance yet to go explore the funeral home who does extreme embalming? Anybody can do extreme embalming. Many funeral homes do it, um, but you have to pay for it. Most families don't want to, um, or the funeral home doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to be interviewing. I keep saying I'm going to be. It's literally trying to connect with a woman who has done that. And so she can tell us more about it. Liz, yeah, 43, owning my age over here. I am a Cubbies fan. I love that you guys know so much about me. It's a little creepy, you know, if you really step back and think about it, that people that you don't know know a bit about you. But I love it. It's kind of, it's sweet. So when the body is dead, how long does the COVID stay alive? COVID never dies. A virus is either active or inactive. It doesn't live or die. So there's lesson one about viruses. And there's no test. There's nobody studied this. Um, there's not been autopsies done just because somebody died of COVID. Um, very few people have ever been autopsied that we've had that have died of COVID. They don't investigate this virus for some reason um, in that way. So it's been an interesting thing for sure. Um, have you thought about getting a temp job in Ukraine? No. Thank you. Oh, I am so not famous <laughs> at all. That's, um, my boyfriend's always like, my girlfriend's famous. And I'm like, I'm so not even, not even a little. Does cancer have an effect on the skin when embalming? You know, it's interesting because different cancers can sometimes leave little markings that you can guess sometimes what kind of cancer the person have. Um, I, I wouldn't say it has an effect, just like a general effect on the skin, but you can get a lot of necrotic tissue from cancer where it's eaten away at the skin. So that definitely affects, affects it. Are COVID death tolls inflated? Um, You know, we do see that the person dies of whatever and they still get swabbed just to see if they had COVID at the time of death. And I don't know if there's studies being done about the correlations or anything or if they just want it put on the death certificate. I don't know. You know, like all I can do is guess the same as you guys on a lot of this um, when it comes to the COVID stuff. Do you ever feel sympathy for the person that died or does that go away in time? I feel bad when somebody commits suicide or takes their life or however you want to call it. Um, I feel bad that they felt that was the only answer. That's the time I feel like I do feel bad for the deceased or if it's a tragic scenario or something, I feel badly. Um, more so, I would I would say. Are your girls interested in what you do? Yeah, they do. They like to go to the funeral home. They don't think about it the way that everybody else does, though. Like, that's where mom works, and that's what's going on, and there's dead people there, and sometimes that's icky, sometimes that's fine, sometimes whatever. They would rather just go visit specific people that are there, that work there, that they like, and and things. So, um, yeah, they're good though. I'm thinking of doing a video like talking to asking different kids questions about death uh, or funerals or whatever, just general, like not creepy, crazy questions and see how they answer and kind of do a video about it. I thought that might be a little fun to do. Um, I beat colon cancer this past year. If a person passes from something like that, does it affect the embalming process? No. What can affect it is drugs that the person is on because of treatment at the time of death. Um, some drugs will neutralize the embalming process. And so that is definitely something that happened. Uh, also, okay, so here's a big, this is a fun announcement. So um, next Sunday, the on uh, May 1st, The Weakest Link, have you guys heard of this game show, right? Well, there's going to be a mortician as one of the contestants. 
me. So you'll have to check out and see if I am the weakest link or not. It's on at nine o'clock Eastern Central Time on NBC next Sunday, May 1st. Or you can catch the replay on like Hulu or Peacock or whatever after as well. Um, but last summer I went and filmed the game show. And finally I can announce that it's going to be on and, and promote it. So check that out next um, Sunday, May 1st, and see if Carrie is the weakest link. Why is dried blood so hard to get off skin? And what is the best way to get it off? Right? It just like sticks. Um, just hot, hot water and soap really is going to be your best bet if you're um, not. Like off a of deceased, there's a water balancing chemical. Um, and Champion, it's called PHA. That will get anything off anything. It's better than dry wash. It's better than anything. If you've got a stain on something, use PHA. If you get it on your own shirt, put a little PHA and then wash it in the wash. Best stuff ever. Biggest, best tip if you're working in the prep room is water corrective guts stains out. No, my daughters are not legally allowed in the prep room while I'm embalming. So no, they would not be in there. Sandy, I don't know. Um, you know, they have to, it wasn't in the fall lineup. It was in the spring lineup. And so it took a long time. I don't know why. And, um, it's called, what's it called? Liz, the chemical, the PHA. What about grain? What about grain, Emily? What, um, ex expand on that question. Is it an easy jump to go from mortician to coroner? Um, sure. Anybody can be a coroner. It's a, you know, voted on and voted in position. So hello, Rose. Um, yeah. Did the Adams family inspire you to work in funeral homes? No, not at all. Not at all. And Lou Hammer is trolling for, or is cruising for cougars. How old are we talking, Lou? What, what is your age range for cougar trolling? That's funny. Yeah, a podcast, um, my new series that's coming out that I'm doing, I think that, where is that premiere? Um, oh, next Friday, the 29th. You'll see a little promo on the new series that's coming. And I debated for a long time whether I was going to do that series as a podcast or as a YouTube. And I thought about not wanting to dilute myself into two spaces because people have told me that they'll just turn on my video in the car, not watch it because it's just me talking. So you can just listen to it when you're in the car. And so like these live chats, they'll just listen to in the car, kind of like a podcast. So I thought about going into the another medium and doing podcasts with it, but eh, why, why change? Yep, new series coming. Um, also a new YouTube channel coming. Whether anybody's gonna like it or not, who knows? But I'm gonna do a sub channel, a little branch off, gonna be a little more just me living my personality kind of going on, and um, yeah, do a little. Just more funzy stuff, but still a little funeral stuff as well. Christina, yes, I have two books that I'm working on. I need to stop and focus and work on them and carve out some time because I have so much content written. It's just putting it all together. I need to do it. How long did it take to get used to being around dead bodies? It just depends. It depends on you and how quickly you can retrain your brain, what you're doing at the funeral home to be around the bodies. Are you just working in the office and you have to walk by them once in a while? Or are you working with them? Are you going on removals? Yeah. Could you explain the process of divorced parents and death of an adult child? Rights, payments, information, disposition. So let's talk Michigan laws because that's what I know, um, unless you have a specific designee form 
to if that person had designated a friend or somebody else to be their funeral person with the correct form, then anybody could be their person and then the parents would be out. However, if not, then that person who has died, their both parents have equal say in what happens to them. And they either have to both agree to something or it goes to burial. So one person cannot want cremation and the other burial and cremation happen. It won't happen. So, um, yeah, they both have legal rights. Payment is whoever wants to make payment. So it doesn't, we don't enforce who makes the payment at all. The family has to decide and somebody has to pay for something to happen. Yeah, Christina, there's so much coming up. Um, yeah, I, I bite off way more than I can chew sometimes, I feel like. <laughs> but it's super fun. I think that's why the new channel is coming is because I wanted to do something fun. Um, not that this isn't fun, but just something that's a little different. It's more of my just personality side of just me getting to do whatever. And here I feel like I really need to be professional and stick to the funeral stuff, give the good information where I can go be a little crazier over there. And it's okay. I don't know why. I feel like I needed a different channel to do that. Just be, I don't know. I don't know. It all makes sense up here. That's what matters, right? Um, oh, Drew, you're so sweet. Do you have any kind of medical license to be a coroner? No, the coroner doesn't really do anything. They just determine whether the person needs to have an autopsy or not, whether the death looks natural or if it needs to go under investigation. That's what the coroner's job is in the middle. It's kind of a political position, kind of some medical stuff. They're not actually doing anything to or with the body except for overseeing what happens. Artificial joints are never removed before cremation. Only things that have batteries, like a pain pump, um, a pacemaker, things like that. Thank you, Lori. They do have a dating app for morticians. I don't know if it's still active or not, but they did have one. And I'm trying to think... Um, Ah, uh, crud. What was it called? Um, oh, man, what was it called? Dead Meat. <laughs> Spelled M-E-E-T. I don't know if it's still around. That was back in like, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Yeah, that's just, oh, God, it's hilarious. It's like Tinder for funeral directors. Um, yeah, on their Facebook page, there hasn't been any posts since oh, a couple years ago. So dead meat. Oh my gosh, too funny. Yeah. Where's the bookshelf? Uh, it's upstairs next to the fireplace. That's where it kind of landed for now. So hello, Joan. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. And James, I have not opened the whiskeys yet. They're sitting right up in my cabinet, my liquor cabinet, sitting there. Oh, I'll save them. I'm going to save them for something. I just don't know what yet. Thank you, Lori. You guys are the best. I think that's what keeps me doing videos and going because I've had times where I've thought about stopping all of it because sometimes it would be nice to like leave the work and just not, <laughs> not have to do anything. But when I come home, then I go into this mode where I'm doing this kind of work. So it's like two full-time jobs, I feel like, that I'm trying to balance some days. And sometimes it would be nice to just not have to look at my phone, not check emails, not do any of it, just kind of take a break. But then I'm like, oh man, I'd miss it. And I feel like it's, I'm providing a good service of good content. At least I like to think so. Um, so yeah. All right. I am going to wind down. This has been 49 minutes. Usually I stay around 40. So I appreciate you guys so much. Um, if you want to get a coffee with Carrie mug, head over to carrythemortician.com and go to shop. I still have um, quite a few in stock. So once I get through some more stock, then I'll come up with some more stuff that you can get. There's always that's naughty t-shirts. Um, yes, I am a mortician. 
koozies and sweatshirts that there's a link for as well. So if you want merchandise, the merchandise is there. I don't push it or um, try and promote it a ton at all, but it's there. So thank you guys. The biggest thing you can do for me is share good videos that you like, do comments, um, encourage somebody else to watch a video that might help them. Because if you've been helped, someone else needs that information as well. So share, subscribe. I found out when I was hitting almost 100,000 and I like posted on my Facebook, my personal Facebook saying, hey, make sure you go subscribe. Some people were like, oh crap, I've watched, you know, like you're my close friend and I've been watching you now for, you know, five years and I'm not even subscribed. And I'm like, what? I feel like my own mother wasn't or my brother, somebody close. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> like you haven't even subscribed. It was just kind of funny. So make sure you're subscribed. You'll get more notifications that way. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.